Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloryTutors.com and welcome to this video on Enthalpies of Neutralisation. Now in this video we're going to look at what Enthalpy of Neutralisation is, we're going to look at the equation associated with that as well, and we're going to go through a worked example just to show you how to work these out. They're really quite straightforward, so there shouldn't be too much of a problem. So we're going to start with looking at what it means. So an enthalpy change actually occurred when we neutralise uh, a acid and an alkali and we produce water. And the definition of enthalpy change of neutralization is the enthalpy change when one mole of water is formed from a neutralization reaction. That one mole of water is really, really important, uh, as you'll see in a minute when we come to the example. And we've got an equation that we can use to work this out as well. And the equation is enthalpy change, which is delta H, and this is measured in kilojoules, so just watch out for that. Uh, and this is minus M, and M is the mass of the solutions that we have. Uh, and this is in kilograms. It's really important that you get some kilograms as well. Uh, C is specific heat capacity, which for water is 4.18 uh, kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin. And the temperature change is in Kelvin as well. Okay, so we're going to go through an example. I'm going to show you exactly how to work this out. Um, so we've got 250 mils of 2.25 moles per dm cubed of HCl, so pretty strong acid. Uh, and this was neutralized by 250 mils of sodium hydroxide solution. The temperature increased by 33 degrees Celsius. And we're going to assume that the density of the solutions is one gram per mil, uh, and the specific heat capacity of water is 4.18 uh, kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin. So the first thing we're going to do is write out our equation to see what we've got, because the equation is really important especially as we've got a one mole of water as formed. So we're going to start with writing our equation. So we'll do this in a, I'll do this in blue, so it's a bit different. So it says that we've got HCl, so we put HCl here, and that's going to react with uh, sodium hydroxide, which is over there. Uh, and this is going to form uh, sodium chloride, which is your salt. And we're also going to form water as well. Now, it's really important at this stage to make sure that it's balanced, as this equation will become useful later on. But you can see here that this is already balanced, and um, so we don't need to do anything else to that. Okay, the next thing we need to do is we then need to use this equation to work out the enthalpy change in the reaction, in the overall, well, of the reactant, should we say, which is delta H, but here. So the enthalpy change in this case is going to be delta H. And that would equal minus, don't forget the minus bit to go in front as well, the mass in kilograms. Now, we've assumed the density of one gram per mil, so we can effectively turn these into grams. So we've got 250 there, and we've got 250 there. So we've got two lots of 250. That's going to give us 500 mils, or in other words, 500 grams. But we have to convert that into kilograms, so that's going to be uh, 0.5 kilograms. So that's what we're going to put there for our mass. C is the specific heat capacity, which is just 4.18. Uh, and then we're going to multiply that by the change in temperature. And the change in temperature is 33 degrees. So we're going to put in 33 there. Now it doesn't matter, I know this is in degrees Celsius, but a change in Kelvin is the same as a change in degrees Celsius as well. So the number won't matter here, so we don't need to actually convert that one. Okay, uh, and then obviously we'll get our answer here. Now our answer should come out at not uh, at uh, minus 68.97 uh, and obviously this is in kilojoules and this is the energy that's given out of this reaction notice the negative sign, this means it's exothermic so we're just going to put that there ok right, ok let's put that in red so it's going to give out heat ok, now that's not our answer, we need to keep going and we need to work out the enthalpy change when one mole of water is formed. This is the enthalpy change of the reactants, not of neutralization. So this is where we use our equation. Now you can see here that we've got our water there, we need to form one mole of water, which we are doing anyway, uh, and we're going to use our molar ratio to work this out. So we need to work out the number of moles of something. Now the only thing we can work out the number of moles of is HCl, because we have a concentration and we have a volume. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to take our number of moles, moles equals, and that's going to be concentration times by volume. Now the volume has got to be in decimeters cubed, and the concentration is in moles per dm cubed. Okay, so if we put that into our equation, 
So our equation should be, uh, if we put our numbers in, sorry, into the equation, the concentration is 2.25, so that's fine. Uh, and the number, and the volume, sorry, of the acid is 250. Now, mils is the same as centimeters cubed, so uh, we're just going to do 250, but we have to convert this into decimeters cubed, so which is effectively dividing by 1,000. Just to make it a bit clearer, I'm just going to put times 10 to the minus 3, and this means divide by 1,000. So this is um, our volume in decimeters cubed. And we should get uh, the number of moles of acid to be uh, 0.56 moles. Okay. And that's of hydrochloric acid. But the number of moles of hydrochloric acid equals the number of moles of water, because say one to one ratio. Now, if your uh, equation was different uh, and you had numbers in front of it, then you'd have to work out the number of moles of water. And that's really important. Remember, we're only working out one mole as well. So we have to work out the, uh, the amount of moles of one mole of water. So in this case, because it's a one to one ratio, then uh, we say that equals the moles of water as well. OK, and in the final step, now we know the moles, we can eventually work out our enthalpy change of neutralization, which is in kilojoules per mole. Now we know the energy change already. Uh, we know the number of moles of water, so we can put that into our calculator and we can work this out. So the enthalpy change under standard conditions of neutralization, which is this symbol here, uh, that equals uh, the uh, energy, which is minus 68.97. And we're going to divide that by the number of moles, which is 0.56. There you go. Uh, and if we stick that in a calculator, we should get our answer. And our answer should come out at minus 123.16. Uh, and that's obviously kilojoules per mole. There you go. And you can see that this reaction uh, is exothermic. It gives out heat energy overall. And that's our final answer there. Um, but that's it. Just some key points, really. Make sure you get your... Uh, balanced equation written down first, because that's really, really important. Make sure you remember that you've got a minus in front of there. Delta H equals minus MC delta T. And this gives an energy in kilojoules. Uh, and you always want to work out the enthalpy change of neutralization when it's the formation of one mole of water. And so that's why we have to do this last step here. But that's your answer. Easy as that. That's it. Bye.